Hello everyone. Uh, if I had to describe Boris Spassky with one word, I would definitely describe him as a gentleman. Uh, when uh, Boris Spassky won his championship title against Tigran Petrosian, the first uh, the first uh, thing he did was uh, uh, went and uh, prolonged uh, the registration on his car. Uh, there's a story about uh, Fischer and Spassky. Uh, they were playing in a tournament when they were still young. And Bobby was uh, very shy, and uh, at the, the first half of the tournament, uh, Bobby's score wasn't uh, very good, and he was somewhere at the half of the tournament table. So Boris Pasky uh, knocked on his door, and he invited him to go for a walk, and to, to you know, go see the bar. And uh, they had a very nice evening, and uh, for the rest of the tournament, uh, Bobby played spe spectacularly. And uh, Boris Pasky won first place, and uh, Bobby Fischer finished second. So in a lot of ways, uh, Boris Pasky is uh, responsible for, um, you know, making Fischer a bit more normal than he was. And uh, this game I'm, I'm about to show you was played in uh, Mar del Plata, Argentina in 1960. Uh, at the time this game was played, uh, Boris Pasky and Bobby Fischer were the two youngest uh, grandmasters in the world. And uh, this is their first encounter. So Boris Pasky is white and Bobby Fischer is black. Uh, Spassky plays e4. Bobby plays e5, and uh, <clears throat> now to everyone's amazement, Boris Spassky plays f4, the king's gambit. And of course, Fischer accepts the challenge, and he plays e takes on f4. Uh, we have knight to f3, g5, h4, g4, knight to e5, knight to f6, d4, d6, kicking the knight, knight goes to d3, uh, knight captures on e4, bishop captures on f4, bishop g7, knight to c3, uh, knight captures on c3, b captures on c3, c5. Bishop to e2, c takes on d4, and Spassky castles here. Fischer plays knight to c6, bishop captures on g4, Spassky, uh, Fischer, Fischer castles, uh, bishop captures on c8, rook captures on c8, and uh, <clears throat> although uh, uh, black's pawn structure is somewhat messed up, he is a pawn up, and uh, this position is completely fine for black. So uh, Fisher is even better here. Uh, we have queen to g4, pinning the bishop, f5, queen to g3, uh, Fisher captures another pawn here, uh, rook to e1, king to h8, unpinning, uh, king to h1, rook to g8, Bishop captures on d6, bishop to f8, bishop to e5 check, uh, Fischer captures the bishop, knight takes on e5, queen takes on e5 with check, uh, rook to g7, uh, rook captures on f5, queen to h4 check, king to g1, queen to g4, threatening a checkmate on g2, we have rook to f2, bishop to e7, Rook to e4, attacking the queen, queen to g5, queen to d4, Spassky doesn't want to exchange queens. And uh, if you look at this position, this is, uh, well, it's maybe a, a bit easier to play this for white, but black is still actually better in this position. And if you ask uh, the engine, uh, Bobby uh, was better for the entire game. And in this position, Bobby should have played something like uh, rook to d8. This seems, uh, well, it seems like a human move and it seems like a very strong move. Uh, because if you look at the position, uh, this knight is uh, well placed, but he can never move, as this bishop to c5 move will be deadly for, black, uh, for white. So instead of this rook to d8, uh, Bobby Fischer blunders and uh, he plays rook to f8. And uh, he misses uh, one very, uh, well, decisive tactic by Spassky. Uh, here Spassky plays rook to e5, attacking the queen. And now you see uh, this queen doesn't really have a good place to go. Uh, if she goes on h4, for example, to still protect this bishop, and uh, if, the, if uh, the queen is captured, then bishop on a, to captures on h4, then this rook is hanging. So rook captures uh, on f8 with check. And uh, after rook e5, uh, Fischer tried uh, rook to d8. So uh, he plays the move that sh he should have played one move ago. Uh, but this now completely allows the tactic as uh, Spassky plays queen to e4. And now you see this bishop is attacked. 
So we have queen to h4 and Spassky plays rook to f4 and in this position Fischer resigns as uh, well there's no move for him to play whatever he plays Spassky will just capture the bishop on e7 and uh, it's all over. So yeah this was uh, the first encounter of uh, Bobby Fischer and Boris Spassky and uh, it's uh, a nice thing to see that uh, Spassky won the, their first encounter even though Bobby will win their last official encounter and uh, uh, just to illustrate how strong these guys were, uh, Boris Spassky finished first in this tournament and Bobby Fischer finished second. But both of them uh, had 13 and a half points. Uh, Spassky was first because uh, he won in their, you know, uh, in in their encounter. And uh, third was David Bronstein, who was uh, two points behind them. So naturally, they were two of the youngest grandmasters in the world, and uh, well, this tournament in Mar del Plata, Argentina, had a lot of press coverage. So yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this game, and uh, if you're interested, uh, here are my two previous games uh, that I recorded uh, some time ago. I'm pretty sure you haven't seen them. Uh, one is about uh, first world champion uh, Wilhelm Steinitz, and the other one is uh, well a story about a young boy who just wanted to play chess. Uh, featuring Mikhail Chigorin. Uh, I hope you check those out, and uh, if you do, you know, feel free to comment on them, and uh, I will see you soon.